we're back again. The Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. Hooray! <laughs> now, the last time I turned the camera on was actually only a few minutes ago. Um, I was showing you stuff, stuff that I was finding in the trailer, the time capsule that I've been going through, and a lot of stuff that was from the Asbury Park and Palace Amusements. Now, <laughs> Palace was pretty good. I mean, they had a lot of uh, ownerships. I mean, um, uh, before Vaccaro was uh, George Lang, I believe it was, and uh, you know he was there for a lot of years. Quite an iconic place, and uh, I bought out a lot of equipment when they closed in 1988. But I, I was a kid. I was born in 1960, and we went to the palace as kids, particularly on birthday parties and off season. Took you know members from the class down there to celebrate. So I have good memories from the palace. The palace uh, uh, kind of went downhill when there was. Uh, a lot of racial riots in the 60s that uh, took over into Asbury Park and uh, you know they never really recovered very well in the 70s and they were you know struggling through the 80s and uh, eventually you know just shut their doors in 1988 and it wasn't until 10 years later that they were going to tear down the building because at this time the old building was starting to fall apart because um, nobody was doing the maintenance on it and uh, then it was the movement to save Tilly well, Tilly was the iconic face that was on the outside of the building, and everybody kind of knew the big smiley face, similar as the arcade face in Steeple Chase in Coney Island. They had that big face, and George Tilly, Tillyopolis. So <clears throat> the palace was the Steeple Chase of New Jersey, and a lot of you know iconic memories were made there. It was there for almost a hundred years. But as we go through this truck, and I was showing you a few things, I wanted to come back to it because on top of these nets. I don't know if you know what that is. You know what that is? This is one of three ring machines that I got from the Palace Amusements in Asbury Park. And a ring machine was at the carousel. And as you rode by on your horse, you would stick your hand out and you would grab a ring and pull it out of the claw arm of this machine. So the gears here would drag a chain in the middle of it that went down to where the rings were loaded down on the bottom and they would drag it up the back and then it would load it down and this little spiral s loader that's where the gold rings would go because each ride there would be one gold ring that would be allowed to come out and the machine would either randomly or by operator pull allow one gold ring to come into the mix and let it come down and that would be towards the end of the ride so somebody who grabbed the gold ring would get their free ride on the merry ground So that's probably close to 100 years old, obviously handmade. And um, the other two, I know where one is. One is in Randy Land down at my old Woolworths building in Wildwood. Um, I'm not sure where the other one is. It's probably in one of these mystery time capsules hiding, waiting for us to discover. And that's always fun in its own sake. And here's the part that would dispense the golden ring down into the ring machine and uh, the chain is not on here now the chain would travel inside here and pick up the rings that were thrown into this bin and the chain would kind of slide along and pick them up and drag them up to the top and drop them down to shoot uh, the arm is not here but um, it might be here somewhere in the the pile which I'm starting to go through but um, it's an important piece because a lot of history with the old carousel ring machines and I, I'm trying to find it. I got really excited before because I was rummaging through, you know, I drop stuff on the floor, things get found on the floor, there's bolts and, you know, most people don't even know what it is. I spot something, I pick it up, whatever it is, because it might be useful, but guess what I found? You ready? Here's the ring machine. I found one of the rings, look at that. Now this was a steel ring, and you can see how they, they rolled it and joined it right there. And these rings were made custom for these ring machines. And people used to go by and have to put their finger in and pull it out of the machine as they were going by in the merry-go-round. So uh, somewhere I have a case of rings when I bought the ring machines and the, you know, the palace closed and the merry-go-round. Um, but this lone ring, probably was lodged somewhere in this ring machine and when i pulled it apart uh to get it out it just kind of fell out but you know it, it's a little more complicated than you think 
you have custom, this is wood, believe it or not. This is made of wood because this thing is quite old. And they custom carved it in order to be a chain lifter. Now you have a regular chain here that would go towards a motor. And there's a second secondary chain here that drove something else. I'd have to look at one of the other ones to see. There's another little motor up here. He's kind of, oh, there he goes. He does turn. But he's going to need some work. But this is the ring machine laying here on its side from the palace. This is a ticket machine. Now this ticket machine would slide into a machine. Could be in a skee ball machine, but it's a little wide for a skee ball machine. So I'm thinking like a uh, draw poker machine or a bingarino or a pokerino or some type of machine along that line. And uh, it still has a few tickets in it. Look at that. Now, it says Sandy's Arcade, 4th Avenue in Asbury Park. Now, why would it say Sandy's Arcade? Well, towards the end of the life with the palace, the palace also owned Sandy's Arcade on the boardwalk. So they interchanged things, and the tickets were um, good from Sandy's Arcade into the palace. And probably towards the end, they were not buying excessive amounts of tickets and using up the tickets from one store to another as they were running out of things. So uh, we have some tickets. Not too many. It looks like only two of them in there, but I'm sure somewhere in here is a box of tickets. But this is the, the neat old ticket dispensers where it would grab the ticket in the middle of the hole and the star wheel would spin and dispense it out here and uh, very nice gearhead motor that would turn this and these ticket guides here these are removable this one's here the other one is missing there'd be one on that side and be held apart by a spring an expansion spring you wouldn't believe that this little piece of metal here when they were still making these ticket guides these ticket machines these ticket guides were like eighty dollars just for that piece of bent metal, but it was bent just right, so it would fit in there, the tickets wouldn't get pinched. So if you bent one and you went to buy another one, it was like 80 bucks. So you had two, one on each side, and they're obviously not interchangeable. The switch here would hold down when the tickets were in there, when you would load the tickets in this back part, the weight of the ticket would hold this wire down and tell the machine that it has tickets. So when it ran out of tickets, the wire would come up and it would indicate that the machine needs service because it ran out of tickets. These plugs here would be for connecting it into whatever machine it was operating. So all kinds of fun stuff that I'll certainly get a chance to use at some point because I have a lot of those old ticket machines. Here's a fun thing I pulled out. I know somebody on my Facebook who just bought one of these from an antique store. It is a Johnson Fair Box. You see that? Now, you know what these are from? See on the top here with all the little holes? On the bottom is a motor. And there would be pulleys that would go from that motor up to the gears. This would be mounted to the floor. Anybody guess what it is yet? These were found on the transit buses. So when you stepped up into the bus, the driver would be over here. You'd come into the bus and you'd have to drop your coins into the fare box. And the driver could see the coins. That's why it's glass around there. And then he would flip the lever here to make the coins fall down into the machine, which would count them up. And they would have a tally for how much money you, you know, collected while you were a bus driver. Now, it obviously needs to be cleaned up, but I bet you that would work because it's a mechanical device, and if you can free up all the uh, moving parts inside, uh, there should be no reason why that wouldn't work again. So if you want to get on my bus, maybe my omnibus, I could put a fare box on the omnibus. Hmm, that would be interesting. Did I peek in this box? I don't know. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It says Dayton Motor Start. Well, could it be a motor starter? I don't think so. What am I gonna do with my ring? I'm gonna put my ring on my finger and then in my pocket because I wanna save my ring. We gotta look in this box because I know you're gonna be as excited as I am. Because I know what it is as soon as I open the box. Look at this. This is a box of tape. 
the Mackenzie Mackenzie Arcadia California continuous loop tape magazine for the Mackenzie program repeaters October of 76 look at that lion roar use in back of owl tape at least that's the way I read it use in back of owl tape well obviously for one of the dark rides now this ended up in the box or in the service room because the tape broke see and it broke at a simple spot that's a foil sensor to tell the machine where it is there's a few sensors on here but um, it needs a splice job and it ended up in the box but this box is filled now this one doesn't have a label so this would be a surprise Let's see what this one is monster 1968 the monster central amusement so again their their purchasing was from central amusement for the palace it's an eight track what do we have piano clock frog and the duck that would be from the bonanza shooting gallery because they had a piano a clock a frog and a duck so they used one tape where they had four different tracks that the machine could pick up and play the sounds for. How cool is that? Look at all these tapes. Look at this one. Mine Explosion. This one says Palace Amusements. 1964. 323 of 1964. Wonderful. Well, this stuff is gold. People, people, do you realize what gold this is? You know, people say, well, you got to have a McKenzie system to run. I have it. I have the McKenzie system from the Palace Amusements. It's six racks of automatic tape loops that ran all the sound effects throughout the entire block long complex the all the dark rides the fun houses the the area background music the carousel music and sound effects all came from one central location disney did the same thing but on a much larger scale they had their their audio department and and dax but um Back in the day of the palace, they bought that machine, McKenzie System, in the early 50s, and it cost $28,000. All vacuum tube amplifiers and tape loops. People don't realize this little tape. Oh, my goodness, the door shut on me. This little tape probably cost, I'm going to guess, back then, if I had to guess, I'm going to guess it would be between $50 and $100 back then. Because they had to program it specially for you. 1967. Unbelievable. This stuff is gold, people. Gold. What is this one? <gasps> lightning. Can you read that? Lightning. The sound for lightning. July of 81. So they were continuously buying tapes, apparently. I guess they wear down. This one's from the Palace Museum Shooting Gallery. The gunfighter reaction. How, how cool is that? Now, the Bonanza Gallery did not use this type of tape. So this has to be going back further to a different type of shooting gallery. It might as well really been a, a real shooting gallery. It might have been with the bullets and the 22s, the special loads. And this one's worn, so I can't read it. So that's a mystery tape. Oh, look at this. Ha, ha, ha. May West, May West of 76. I, I, you know, I'm thrilled. I'm getting goosebumps with this stuff. Goosebumps. Can you see the goosebumps under my shirt? You can't see them, but I'm telling you, they're there. What do we have here? WC Fields. Ah, yes, my little chickadee. Hey, Bill, I heard uh, you don't drink anymore. Not anymore, just the same amount. Yes, yes. What do we have here? Another one. Another one. The cave. The monster in the cave. Is that what it says? Monster in the cave? Hope the monster doesn't get out of the cave. Oh, this tape is open. I guess that's the, the loose one there. What do we have here? The kissing. Kissing cooing. 76. I don't want to damage these tapes here that are apart. 
I can't read that one. Can you read that? I don't know. What we got here? Another light one. Hatchet Man? The Hatchet Man from 1967. I was seven years old. I was six years old because it's March of 1967. I was born in October. I was six years old when they made this tape. Oh my God. Lion Roar. Now I have the lion. So the lion roar works well. What do we have here? Another lion roar. I guess the lion did a lot of roaring. Woman screaming. 1966. Did women scream in 1966? These are a little tangled. I don't want to I don't want to stretch the tape, so I'm gonna stop there. But this stuff is absolute gold. And you know. Although I have the McKenzie sound system, I would not actually operate it in a practical use. Why? Because it's tape. It's tape and, and rollers and capsons and, and they wear. And you'd be remaking tapes all the time and uh, it uses tube amplifiers, heavy duty ones and amplifiers pull a lot of power and you can't get tubes anymore. So I would redo that with um, current current audio supply, some kind of computer system, I would do it, but it's important to have the way they did it then, because my experience is also one of an educational basis. I mean, school systems could come all grade levels to see the amusement museum that I wanted to set up, and they could talk about the way things were done, not just the, uh, the machines that they played, the artwork, the, the family values that were, the different sound effects that were made, how they were made, how they produced them. Um, how they made them work in the arcade. All this stuff is gold. So having the machine that did it is very important. But having the tapes, the original tapes, you can make the sounds again as it was. And this is not, by any means, the only box of tapes I have. Because with the sound system, I not only have all kinds of tape carts, which these are, but I have real reels that did the background sounds throughout the complex to create that atmosphere and that mood of the Palace Amusements back in its day, its day of the 50s and the 60s, and probably going back to the 40s, when you're talking about reel to reels, they didn't have the McKenzie at that point. So this stuff, it's real treasures. And you know, I found this, it fell out of a box. Anybody else would have been just like, oh, step on it. They didn't know what it is, but do you know what this is? 12 volt, it's a little light bulb. This bulb is probably, I know the configuration. Now they made bulbs in different configurations, that's for sure. But this is a very, very bright bulb because it's in a ceramic base. They only put light bulbs in a ceramic base, even when they're small like that, if they get very hot. And if they get very hot, they're very, very bright. And that bulb, probably was inside because of the size and i remember this configuration inside a midway rifle game that used a light beam instead of a stylus to hit the targets they used photo sensors so the gun would have a very very bright bulb inside the gun that would light up when you shot gangbusters was one it was a machine gun they also had um duck hunt that was another one used a light bulb like that that would be inside but that bulb you know, if you could get it today, I'm sure it would be a lot of money. So we have to keep that somewhere, and I'm sure it works. Believe it or not, I'm sure it works, because they would not have saved it if it didn't work. They would have tossed that somewhere. I'm just looking further back, and I recognize this stuff. Most people would not. There's some things I don't recognize, but I can figure it out. But do you know what that is? Hmm? That is an Atari steering wheel. Now, can you see the, the key on the middle of the wheel? That's Atari symbol, the key. And I'm not sure, it sure says Atari somewhere, but it's got the stick shift. It's got some buttons. Probably one's a horn, one's a, I don't know, something else. I don't think it's a two-player game. There's a start button, the old volcano-type start button. That is from an Atari Superbug. Superbug. Black and white game uh i'm gonna say around 77 
in that area, Atari Superbug? I know I have an Atari Superbug, so even if there isn't an Atari Superbug somewhere in these trailers from the palace, we have an extra drive console from an Atari Superbug. How cool is that? Peanut bags. Oh my gosh, look. The hot roasted fresh peanuts, the peanut shop. Now it doesn't say planters because those are knockoff bags. Planters Peanuts was the big brand name that everybody knew, and they were on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. They might have had one in Asbury Park in its day. I don't know, but it would have been the type of thing that they would put there. But somewhere along the line, somebody copied the style of their bag, and they were selling peanuts in the palace, and they used the same type of bag for the hot roasted peanuts. The peanut shop doesn't say planters, but it's a peanut shop. So, peanuts are peanuts, I guess. <laughs> well, I haven't opened any of these boxes yet, but I'm sure I will and have a good time doing it. Stuff, stuff, and more stuff. I guess if you like stuff, you love my episodes because if there's one thing I got, I got stuff. So, I got to get back to work. I'm just having too much fun showing you all this stuff. And we'll see you next time. The Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. Hooray! Stuff, stuff, stuff. I love stuff. We gotta make a special, special category for Randy's stuff. Stuff.